moving boxes. Feels like half my job is just moving equipment back and forth. So this will be the start, getting my hives out into their springtime yards. Yesterday we were able to get through a couple truckloads of bees and our first bit of bee work for the season. And for the most part, I'd say the hives, well, they are what they are. We have big ones, we have small ones, we have dead ones, we have queenless ones, we have hungry ones, honey-bound ones, the whole gamut. And I'm planning on moving out two yards, but it's just, the bees are just coming to life. So I think I'll load one yard up and get it out and then prepare for our bee work this afternoon. Filled this up yesterday. I want to take a tray with me with that yard that I have loaded. Get it out. As you can hear, they're just starting to fly. And nothing on here. You're done that. This is the second milled stuff. And I've milled a little more finely. And they've lapped that right up. What the coarse grains left there. I'm gonna have to top these feeders up. These girls are done. Look about the scraps. Looks like I'm gonna be sending carry out first thing to top up the feeders again. We're gonna be running out of this stuff. and the bees are just starting to get out into flight. It's kind of a little cool, a bit of a breeze yet. This patty's been on for roughly two weeks, I guess. You can see they've eaten half of it now. Just want to go down into the nest to see what kind of a difference it's made. We have just an absolutely beautiful frame of brood here. That is textbook. What I'm looking at here is capped brood. Surrounded by developed larvae. And the further out you go, the younger it gets until we run into eggs. Same on this side. I'm not gonna shake the bees off here, but this is all nicely, this is capped brood, beautiful capped brood. And I'm seeing nectar, or not nectar, but it's uh, sugar syrup. Develop, developed open brood and then younger as we go out, and it's seeing, it's rimmed with open syrup, open feed. That is really important. Not only do they have the honey stores, which is maintenance, they have that inflow of sugar, which is extremely important for a developing nest. So they're dipping into my open feeders over there and getting what they need. That inflow of resource is really important this time of year. Another beautiful frame of brood. Just you think of it, you know, the older stuff's in the center, and then as it goes out, it gets younger and younger. And then when that center emerges, she'll start laying there, so then you'll get the older going into the younger. Everything works in circles. Just look at that. 
this is a good little queen. Marked as a 17. She won't be that old. But boy, look at that. There she is right there. Busy, busy laying eggs. I'm not going to dig down. Well, one more frame. That's two frames of nice looking brood. It's the third one. This this nest is going to be fantastic. I'm going to mark this one as a strong colony. So I'm looking at eight frames of bees here and three going on four. This colony has got two blue tags already. So I'm going to add a third tag onto this and this colony since 2017 has provided me with three years of nice continual growth. And it's that brilliance is which I want to promote. So this could be a possible candidate for a breeder. Lots of honey on hand yet. So very nice and conservative. At the same time, you know, exhibits that that air of prosperity, growth, brilliance that I want to tap into. So it looks like that brood nest may have been tapping into this patty which reinforces maybe the fact I should have had patties on the entire apiary by now. But we're going to dig into another colony of the equal strength. I'm going to try to find another box of bees and see what kind of a nest is being developed within that hive. at this one it's just a little bit smaller but it should be capable it'll show what we want to see Good morning. So the last time I've been in these colonies has been uh, September maybe would be the last time I'd dig down to the nest. August for sure. So I, we have a lot of housekeeping to do in these boxes yet. Housekeeping I mean keeping the frames nice and clean up on top. I just feel it promotes better management. So it allows you to do stuff without continually being, you know, having to work around all this burr comb all the time. Every time we go in, we just kind of tidy it up a little bit. We don't get too carried away. Get this frame out. These girls have lots of feed on hand, which is good. They're a little edgy, but they're not stingy, so that's nice. So I'm seeing syrup coming in, that's good. So the stomachs will be full of feed. That's what I want. Bird nest is going to be here. Let's see what we got. Surf. Here is a frame of nicely developed larvae, older larvae, rimmed with pollen and syrup on the edges. That inflow of syrup is really important. Nice to see it starting to come in. Here is a nice frame of brood. Not as well laid out as that other hive, 
but older brood kind of like that and then younger younger brood and then eggs and this is a nice side so here is what I was seeing in the other colony too so we have a patch of real nice mature brood let's get in the sun here surrounded by developed larvae and eggs on the edges so that's that's nice so this queen is starting to reach out Here's another frame, cap brood, and the frame laid full of eggs. And this side completely laid full, full of eggs. There she is right there. She's busy. And this side's starting to get into feed. So I'd say these two colonies are about the same size. These two colonies, basically the same same hive in the sense it has the same amount of feed same amount of bees look like the same amount of pollen within the frames same amount of collected syrup being stored away the difference between these two colonies is this one did not get fed a patty earlier on that one did and what I'm seeing between the two in regards to brood development that colony is maintaining more of a presence within the brood nest. Obviously, she's those colony, those bees have been able to uh, find that initiative to be able to develop out that brood. So I have three frames of cat brood, and which is rimmed with a lot of uh, developed larvae. This one, I'm seeing more of a, a stagger within the development. I'm seeing cat brood. It, not as much of a presence as that one. This one maybe has a frame and a half. That has three. And I'm just seeing some open larvae and then a lot of eggs. So that's telling me that that patty was important to what I'm seeing in that colony. I'm going to take a look into another colony here. I have the same size. This one's a little bit smaller. We're going to go into this yellow box here. This one was not fed any supplement, any patty I mean. They all, all have had access to open supplement. Ooh, this is nice quality. Get down there. Ah, wake up girls, time to move. It's a little bit too early to work with them yet. They don't want to move. Syrup. So they have lots of honey in hand and they have syrup. So their stomachs will be full of sugar. Check mark number one. Mm -hmm. 
syrup. We haven't gotten into the brood nest yet. We are storing syrup away. <clears throat> I think the brood nest is closer to the sidewall. Here we go. She's got some eggs in this frame. And we have, what do we have here? Here she is right there, beautiful little blackie. So we have a little bit of cap brood and we have the rest of this frame laid out in larvae. Developed larvae, moving forward. Beautiful frame of brood. Rimmed with developed larvae and eggs. You can see syrup around the edges. Same on this side. Nice little patch of brood. And developed larvae around that. So this colony is moving forward. a little edgy. Nothing like being woken up. Here we have a little bit of cat brood surrounded with mature larvae. And again on this side, patch of cat brood surrounded with eggs and stored syrup. Colonies have pollen on hand, so that's a positive. Now I'm just going to scooch this cluster into the center a little bit more. So I'm looking at this nest, not fed by a patty, and it's not a whole hell of a lot different than that other one fed by a patty, except I'd say the one with the patty has more presence to the nest. So if I had my choice between the two colonies, I would choose the one that was fed with the patty. So to round this out, let's just tap into another colony that was fed by a patty, just to, just to try to see, see what I want to see. This colony, it's a little bit smaller, it's all called about a six to seven frame. Doesn't show that on top, but underneath it's six to seven frames. This patty's been on, like I say, for two, two and a half weeks. There hasn't been a lot of consumption. Oh yeah, there has. They've, obviously the brood nest is right there. You can tell where the brood nest is by where they eat. They've eaten that down. Probably taken a third of that patty. Rimmed with syrup, 
they've been busy too. A little beautiful little patch of brood here, rimmed with developed larvae and syrup. So their stomachs will be full of syrup. Which is important. The nest is nice and wet. Oh, a beautiful patch of brood. Beauty. Seeing this on the video is just a nice slab of brood there. Rimmed with mature larvae, rimmed with eggs and syrup. So very nicely organized. As on this side. Beautiful frame of brood. This colony is smaller than those other two big ones that I hadn't fed and yet the brood nest is much more substantial, much more confident. I'm thinking coming up with my conclusion here. So I'm looking at here and this is not much going on. The frame has been kind of chewed down because it's probably too close to the other one. A little patch of brood there, syrup in it, and a beautiful slab of brood on this side. Rimmed with developed larvae. My goodness. That is what I want to see. I'm seeing larvae of all stages. Cat brood, mature larvae, all the way down to the egg stage. This side is right full of mature larvae. Ooh, that is so nice and solid. There's confidence in this hive. They, they're feeling, they're feeling ambitious, and they're taking. There she is, beautiful little queen. She's uh, that's marked as a 16. She's not 16 years old. She's too fuzzy for that. But nice. This side is right full of eggs, and in the center, I'm looking at eggs. Just the eggs are hatching and being moved into that larval state. So there's ambition. There's uh, there's promise within this colony. So what I'm going to have to conclude, is even with all my efforts of feeding hundreds and hundreds of pounds of open supplement, although these colonies have got the open supplement too, that this availability of protein in the form of patty has provided the, uh, the ambition within this colony to take that step forward and provide the confidence needed within the nest to be able to rear more substantial brood nest. Obviously, the other two colonies, they're there, they're holding their presence, but they're not, they, they're not developing a brood nest out like this. You know, this, this, these nests that have patties on have a very nice slab of mature brood, cap brood, surrounded with larvae, and on the edges, on the round side of that, the, the frames have mature larvae, surrounded by eggs, surrounded by syrup. The other colonies that don't have the patties on seem to be a little more staggered in the development. Uh, they have brood, cap brood, not as much of it, not as much of his presence. They have mature larvae, but not as ambitious as these two colonies here. They have more so an egg, so that queen is just, you know, come on girls, come on girls, here's the eggs, here's the eggs. Take them on to larval state, but those worker bees just don't have enough protein, I guess, available protein at all times to be able to take that step forward transition into an ambitious brood rearing state. That is how I read that nest. So in a way, even though I cracked the lids during some cold early days and got the patties on, these colonies are advancing much further and much more ambitiously than the colonies 
that I didn't crack the lids and put the patties on. So by cracking those lids, there are very little disturbance. These colonies probably settle themselves back in. I looked at a big one, I looked at a smaller one, and same in the others. It's quite evident. So probably, I'm going to stop overthinking this whole thing. It's probably safe to say that even though they have access to all that open feed, which is contributing to, you know, triggering those, those mechanisms all the same, even though they have access to that open open syrup to bring to bring the sugars and fill their stomachs full of sugars, they did better with patties on the colonies as compared to the patties without, just because of the availability of that fresh protein source, I suppose. We shall get busy and we shall put patties down.